Hey, I just want to say a few things before showing you today's video. First, I started riding from Andorra to the east instead of the original track direction, which is from the east to the west. Uh, the second thing is that now if you want to get to the top of the Pic Negre, you have to pay 25 euros. Thank you, Andorra, for that beautiful gift. Anyway, uh, the other thing is remember to always check the tab before you start riding, just in case they have removed any sections. Having said that, let's go and start riding through section 17. Uh, 71 and I'm finding this sign so it says no circulation except for neighbors I don't know this looks like it's a sign for some time don't really know what to do because there's no connection point here I will have to go out jump on the road and then we join it further up the thing is that most the trails around here they all belong to someone and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this was after a lot of uh, bikes and quads going through but anyway important to keep in mind. Okay, so I have finished on the other side and there is no sign whatsoever of traffic being prohibited. This is very common if, uh, if they're not like certain people, they, they calls or whether they don't want to come in, get into that place. <laughs> Okay. 
kilometer 21 to 24 it's the surprise i think it might be the last surprise from the linesman who knows but i can tell you here you will really put any skills test this is tiny tiny super tiny rocks what happens with this there's no grip okay my my bike i wanted to put first and yeah well it's tall so what can i do it, it just went to neutral instead of uh of first and this is it just wobbles so much the uphill i mean the rear goes everywhere so even though i tried to put the weight right in the center so not too much in front but a little bit in the back as well to give some traction it's really hard so guys um all i can say is i send my prayers to you <laughs> nah joking but it is it, it is very technical it is very hard so yeah there might be a chance that you actually have to go down and then up i'll have africa twin you know all it does is just a spin why did i obviously you know how to use the clutch and why not i think it will be very tricky um i will have to go down and then up again it's good i have a small one at least it there's traction and that's it you know no power but there's traction but the views are amazing that that is undeniable oh sorry that way and yeah just taking a break because honestly it was it was very intense so that's it for now i am very close very very close to get to the end but before we get to the end there was this structure this building according to the story which is there there um is the remains of uh, border control which was normally taken care of by german officers as well as the spanish officers during the spanish civil war which as you may imagine it was at the same time of the second world war so the the interesting thing about this is that this was the only pass through the mountain that cars could get through Hence, what people used to do is get here and then burn the cars so they wouldn't let people pass through. So, yeah, there you go. A piece of history, actually. Let me show you the picture. There it says, German soldiers with the park rangers. Um, yeah, and just the name of the the person who took the pictures. But And there you go. So, France, Spain, that's where we are. Santuario Les Salines, Puch Les Salines. That's where we're going now. Well, a bit of history for you. So what can I say? 356 kilometers two days it is a very very demanding one it has a little bit of everything um i think the the, the beauty of this section is how you see the the pyrenees the best part of the pyrenees the pyrenees itself is quite easy compared to what is going to come to you afterwards uh the pyrenees due to the to the composition of the stones that they that he has like a lot of iron a lot of chalk a lot of easy to break stones it's quite easy to go around and it's just very dusty however once you move to the pre-pyrenees and pre-pyrenees and moving towards the coast right now we're very close to the coast and just less than a kilometer from from the french border um it becomes very technical so you have gravel, thin gravel, sand with sand, sand, gravel, sand, thin gravel, thin gravel <laughs> with stones, stones, thin gravel and sand. You have so many possible combinations once you start moving towards the coast. It gets warm, it gets humid, you start filling in your body, um, which is great, but it also will require more of your concentration. And especially if you will do this during summer, I will really recommend you to carry a lot of water because you will feel drained after certain of certain uphills and downhills that you'll have to to ride through it is by far my favorite um, mainly because you see this change of you know like especially flora and trees perhaps trees not so much at a certain altitude they all tend to be the same but at a mid level altitude so like 
900, 800, things start changing. And as you approach the coast, by some reason, you get a lot of birch and beech trees, which especially in the, in the, in those areas where the sun doesn't, doesn't touch the mountain or to the very end. So kind of like the hidden corners of the mountains that, that they are like where they just keeps the humidity and you can still tell that it's cold. And luckily during those hot days, once you go through those kind of beautiful tree tunnels, you'll feel a little bit of a breeze and you can calm, relax, take a break. Um, because otherwise I think you, you will have a, a heat stroke, trust me. The bike, perfect. Uh, today I had the opportunity to ride along some, uh, three guys from the UK. Uh, one was riding a Ducati Multistrada, uh, an Africa Twin DCT 2018, um, or 2019, sorry. And uh, an IGS 1250 with the alloy rim. They dropped the bike once in a very, I have to say it was very technical, but like I told them, you just stop it and all you had to do is just go a little bit more because just like five meters after, it's just the end of this. But it's, it's one of the sections that you need to be very focused and that specific downhill, you need to be very careful because you're very close. Like the easy way to go around it is next to the cliff and the cliff is not a nice fall. Carry water guys, carry a lot of water and more water. So it sounds stupid what I'm saying, but you will need it. You will definitely need it uh, and food as well. Um, something that can give you some carbs because you will be burning those carbs. So that's it guys, section 13 is over. It was very demanding, I'm tired. Uh, I have to say like doing it in two days is a bit of a, of a stretch, but doable. Whoever can do it in one day, awesome. But I think first you're going too fast, in my opinion. Sometimes I go fast, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, but I think it might be a little bit too dangerous going at that speed, if you complete sections 13 in one day. The other thing is that you're not really enjoying the landscapes. I mean, certain places are really beautiful and you should definitely stop, take a break, see your surroundings, see the mountains, see the different mountain ranges. If you're not doing that, I think you're missing the point of the TED. Guys, if you've got any comments, if you've got any suggestions, uh, any questions you might have about section 13, let me know and be careful with the animals in the Pyrenees because they <laughs> they are a little bit funny they can just cross the trail in the last expected moment all right so anyway take care love you all and keep riding guys bye for now